The next speaker we're going to have today start off with a crowd similar to this. It was, CM, it was Seattle Hemp Fest. Years ago, when Seattle Hemp Fest started, man, there was only like about 300 people. Now they have 300,000. It is a beautiful organization. The next lady we're going to have come up here, her name is Talisha Lopez. She's one of the greatest people. As a matter of fact, I had no room last night, ladies and gentlemen. I got everything here except for my own room. And she gave me the bed last night to sleep in. So I'd like to appreciate her today. Talisha, take the left. You lost it. Hey guys. Uh, so I came all the way from Seattle to talk to you about a couple of things. I'm glad to be here. It's a nice day. It's probably raining at home, so it's better to be here than there. I believe in the power of protest to facilitate change and set an example, which is why I traveled to D.C. to speak to you. I help plan and run an event called Seattle Hempfest. We are the world's largest rally for cannabis reform. In 2010, we drew an estimated 300,000 people to our two-day event, all-volunteer event, by the way. Rob Campia, director of the Marijuana Policy Project, said that for those two days each year, Hempfest attendees see what it's like for the public use of marijuana to be legal, because using, possessing, and transferring marijuana for no remuneration, also known as passing a joint, is legal in the park. How is this possible? The Seattle police who work at the event are directed not to arrest anyone for cannabis, and in 2010 there were zero arrests. There was also zero violence or other criminal activity. This was not always the case. Hempfest has changed police and public consciousness of the cannabis consumer throughout our 20-year history. It is about more than smoking marijuana in public view. It's about mobilizing a political force to enact change. We do very little advertising and our critical mass keeps growing and growing. We are so large in numbers that we create a cannabis freedom zone within the boundaries of our festival. What does it feel like to be free? Imagine passing a joint with your uncle, his wife, and some of your friends while a few smiling police officers sit in chairs grilling hot dogs about 50 feet away from you. You're enjoying the beautiful waterfront park with your loved ones without fear of being hassled by the police for enjoying a harmless plant. Political scientist Hakim Bey calls this a temporary autonomous zone, which is a microcosm of a free society where participants can feel freedom not only without fear, but with joy and celebration. This view into a world after the cannabis revolution ends doesn't have the same problems as a complete victory because it is only temporary. It can take the freedoms without having to worry about sustaining them on a more permanent basis. It is successful because of the critical mass of people who are in the space and time boundaries of the freedom zone. We are so massive, no one tramples on our freedom. Discovering this about Hempfest has led me to spend a lot of time thinking about how to empower others to realize their own freedom. I'm here to encourage you to throw your own protest. Throwing your own protest means leveraging your free speech rights. It means experience freedom of expression. The first step to throwing your own political rally is to do some basic planning and research. Do you want to march, a rally, or both? Will you have a speaker?